Hi, I'm Dr. Mark, and I'm a voice teacher and stage director. Whether you're a professional pop or rock star that's wanting to take your performance to a next level, or you're just interested in making your car singing or shower singing easier and more comfortable and fun, I can help you get there. I'll start doing that today by reacting to and teaching you singing and performing tips that we can learn from the top performers around the world. Let's learn from the original singing voice actors of a large variety of Disney movies and see if we can help you sound more like a Disney prince or princess, lion, baboon, or whatever it happens to be. Here we go. Nah! How do we get that sound? And the back, up to small, relatively claps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that. Just make a nice yeah. Like you're saying, someone asks you something across the room, you're like, yeah. That's what this sound is right there. One of the reasons I love Disney movies is because they capture their their real life people so well in the movie. You'll notice the mouth shape is so on. It is so on between the character and the real life person. That's good animating, but it's really cool as a, a singer to realize they do that because subconsciously we know what sound belongs with what mouth shape. We can see if it's off, if it's believable. And because it's so nuanced here and they're able to capture it so well, it just feels so right. It matches so well. And I love it. Here with her, upper two smile. Ah, with a little bit more uh in it. There's more height in that back. That jaw is nice and released in back. It's really open and rich in the back. Really relatively open in front as well. And that vibrato is relatively consistent. Placement has that forward ping to it, that speech-like, but it's more here up in our mask and a little bit further back with also some added lift in the back and warmth there as well. So what they didn't get with the character versus the realized person here is that size of mouth. Adina Menzel has a really big mouth there. You'll notice that this upper tooth smile, this really ah in the back almost all the time, even with the oh, it's lips wrapped around an ah. The placement is really forward. It's kind of right here forward at the mouth, sometimes up here. So it's between kind of these places here if you were to try to send your sound that way. Play with it now point in a direction and try to send your sound that way. You'll notice that your body does a whole lot of different things to make that happen for you. And that's one way we can play with the idea of placement and making different sounds. With Adina Menzel, it's really forward, it's really up there, and that sounds in that place, which gives us this unique sound as well. That resonance space is open in that app place, but again, that placement is here at our teeth and at most up kind of here towards our sinus region. Try pointing the fingers, It's that forward place. Say day! Again, speech like, whiny, forward. There you go. You can be Elsa today. The color is the sky, ay mi amor, ay mi amor. Where should I put my shoes, ay mi amor, ay mi amor. You say put them on your head, ay mi amor, ay mi amor. Blessing, I'll count it as a blessing that I'm only un poco loco. Oh, tall, placement back. Still speech-like, really articulate, but that's what gives us this warmer sound 
There's not a lot of this whine ping forward buzz in it. Doesn't need to be. It's got a mic and it creates this warm, easy to listen to sound. When you're staring at a demigod, what can I say except you're welcome for the tides, the sun, the sky. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, you're welcome. I'm just an ordinary demigod. Speaking voice with ass shape in back, jaw release, upper two smile, consistent breath flow. There you got it. Wait to see what my buddies all think of me. Just imagine how much cooler I'll be in summer. The hot and the cold are both so intense. Put them together, it just makes sense. So with a character voice like this, one of the things that's really important is, yes, keeping that placement consistent and forward. That's what he's doing. Na, 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 na. Try it. Na, 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 na. But then giving us as much of a roller coaster in terms of dynamic and pitch and colors and, it, and exploring all those things in there. And it's that dramatic contrast that makes it sound funny and gives this kind of character voice. He's also really articulate with his lips there, which is really important with a song like this, where the words are so important. And then suddenly I bump into you. That's crazy. I was feeling the same thing because I've been searching my whole life to find my own place. And maybe it's the party talking or the chocolate fondue. But with you. But with you, I found my place. I and and it's, it's nothing like I've, I've ever known before. Love is an open door. Upper toe smile, yes, here and there, with the real people and the characters. The big thing with both these characters is that their speaking and singing are right in the same place. So try doing that today. Try speaking what you're about to sing, and then just try to start singing on sustained pitches, keeping in the same place, and see what happens. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell Princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? Actually, relatively consistent vibrato. Placement is more like straight up to where our eyes are. Really consistent airflow, open and back, mostly in ass shape. His is, has a little more height in it, which keeps this pop sound. And there isn't a whole lot of forward ping in it. Again, really speech-like. The key here is they're keeping it open. I don't see any tension there. It is so relaxed and just easy and pleasant and warm sounding which has a lot to do with that height, that release in the jaw, and just keeping it really easy and gentle and letting the mic do the work there with that consistent airflow. I'm where I'm meant to go and last I see the light And it's like the fog is lifted And at last I see the light do I need to say anything there? Upper two smile, release jaw, ah, forward placement. His was a little further back with a little more height, gave it that warmth and richness to it. But still, both of them kept it really present, forward and buzzy. Try it today, say wah, wah, and see what happens. There's some of that, especially in hers. But again, just open, consistent vibrato here too, which also lends to kind of the ease in the voice. Yes, it's a blast from your past. Whose lies were too good to last? Oh, no. Say hello to your precious Prince Ali. <laughs> He's kind of pressing on the voice there. Try it. Try just. Kind of, it's almost like you're lifting a heavy box. Ugh. Try it. And it's like you're taking your vocal folds and really tight. Just put a little bit of air through it. Again, he's letting the mic do a lot of the work. Is that a healthy way to sing long term? No, but again, it's a character voice 
And so here we go. So feel free to play with it. Don't play with it very long. And if you are, don't do it very loud. Let the mic do the job there. Yeah. So do all these people just have really big white front teeth? No. Upper tooth smile is a thing. It takes some work. Try doing it. Try singing with it in the mirror and see what happens. You're going to notice it's not as easy as it looks. It really should be because it's just like we're smiling and singing at the same time or talking and we can talk and smile at the same time. Why not sing and smile? Well, because we've added all kinds of tension into what we think singing should be. So try it and see what happens there. She's also singing with the ad in the back, adding vibrato in at the end of phrases, which gets the stylistic difference. I'm gonna be a mighty king, so enemies beware. Well, I've never seen a king of beasts with quite so little hair. I'm gonna be the main event, like no king was before. I'm brushing up, I'm looking down, I'm working up. I love both her voices, especially young Simba's voice. Mm, so great. Try doing nay, 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 right? And see what happens. That's kind of where he's living in there. It's also really speech-like forward. It's the young Michael Jackson sound. Really great. So try that. Try just speaking on pitch up there, trying to keep it easy and that airflow consistent. You're going to find your voice sounding more like that sound. Especially up top, then we went down for a second, he pulled that back into that kind of oh, warmer, richer place in terms of placement, and then he brought it back forward again into that speech-like place. Gorgeous, open, resonant space, nice, beautiful smile with a sound that was just easy and consistent with that airflow rolling, no tension anywhere, just letting that sound right on out without holding anything back. Mm-hmm. I will or a perfect bride, or a perfect dog, can it be, I'm not meant to play this part. Is there a reason why we hear her voice everywhere? Yeah, because it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's just so easy and beautiful and clean and clear and easy to listen to. So... What is it that makes it that way for you? Look at it. See what she's doing. What is she doing with this mouth and this shape? You've heard me talk about what's going on. What do you hear in terms of vibrato, in terms of this resonance space? What kind of vowels back here? What's happening up front? How much is she releasing here in front? How speech-like is it? What's going on with that upper two smile? How consistent is the airflow? Yeah, she's just awesome. Also, if we talk about breath down here, in terms of what she's doing there, she's keeping it nice and suspended and out and flexible. There's no grabbing, there's no pushing or forcing. It's just really flexible, gorgeous, balanced singing. Ah, so great. There goes the baker with his trade I call him. The same old bread and what's the sound. Every morning just the same. This is the morning that we came. This poor provincial town. The live performance wasn't quite what the cartoon performance is. I think there's some time difference there. Um, to me, it just sounds like there's more collapse in here than usual. There's less of that ass space. There's less consistent airflow. To me, it just sounds like a voice that was at its prime at one point and has not been maintained and slipped a little bit. Is that a problem? No. Life probably happens. She had other things going on. She's still getting up there and performing, having a good time, and that's great fun for us. But in terms of the sound, um, that's what's going on. The vibrato also is not as consistent, not as clean and clear, a little heavier, a little wider vibrato. And consequently, it doesn't sound as clean as consistent as the original. I want to the snowman. Please, I know you're in there. People 
bother asking where you've been. What did you see? A produced smile? Ah, speech like, placement forward. There it is. I think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can. Okay, so Pocahontas, she's really keeping it speech like. Jaw relatively collapsed, not very much space here in the back. That placement was somewhere between straight up and forward. And there we are. I can go the distance. I don't care how far. Somehow I'll be strong. I know every mile will be worth my while. I would go most anywhere to find where I belong. At the end here, something different that we haven't talked a lot about in previous videos is larynx position. That's this Adam's apples, how you're gonna gauge it here. You can run your finger down until you feel this kind of lump. Easier usually to find on males than females, but you can still find it, it's there. Here, this sound is gonna result, this higher, brighter sound is gonna be more consistent with a higher larynx. You'll often hear explain that we want this lower larynx, this larynx that's lower. What that's going to do is it's going to change the sound. That's often why we hear coaches like myself encourage you to do something like yawn. That's going to get that space to open and that larynx to drop. That more full space is kind of like opening that acoustic guitar body. It's going to open that resonant space so there's more fullness, more richness to it. This particular sound that's a little more youthful, a little brighter, we often associate with music theater, Disney, sometimes pop. You can imagine comes from if you shriek that acoustic guitar body. The overtone series is going to be a little narrower in terms of its scope. It's going to be a little more focused, a little bit brighter, a little bit brasher. But still, he's keeping that phonation easy. He's keeping the balance between force of vocal fold closure and air coming through it relatively easy. And consequently, is he singing easily here? I think he's singing really quite easily and could sustain this for a good deal of time. He has some consistent vibrato. It's kind of this style of straight tone then into vibrato. And we're also getting this really nice consistent airflow. I love this sound. I love this singer, I love the song. I think it's really excellent, but that's what's kind of giving the difference in the sound. If he lowered that larynx, it become a sound that's much more mature and richer sounding and probably wouldn't quite fit the character. This goes back to the principle of creation of sound, which is how these vocal folds are coming together in relation to the air coming through them. Again, I call it this balance between force and flow, force of vocal folds coming together and flow of air coming through them. And creation of sound. What is the shape in there that that sound's going into and bouncing around and resonating? Where is it resonating? How is that shape influencing the sound so that when it comes out, we get a specific sound? Here, it seems like the creation is really quite healthy. The larynx is high and we're getting this specific ass shape with a high larynx that's getting this specific sound. Try it today and see what happens. What we wanna be able to do is create a consistent sound. So we want this larynx to stay stable. So if we're wanting to sing with that more open, rich sound, we wanna be able, this larynx to be able to stay stable and not change depending on the pitch. If we're seeing this higher larynx position, we want it to stay relatively consistent because all of a sudden if that larynx drops, the sound's gonna change significantly. It's gonna sound like a very different voice. When we're talking operatically, majority of people are gonna say, we want this lower larynx position. One of the reasons we want it is because again, it's giving us a fuller overtone series. It's giving us more resonance with less force. He's singing with a mic here. Can he sing easier and more gentle on the voice and get this sound and spend less vocal capital? Yes, he can. So depending on the style, we can still get a healthy sound one way or the other, but that's what's making the difference in the sound. Try it today. See if you can sound more like a Disney princess, prince, snowman, or baboon, or lion, or whatever it happens to be. So my challenge here to you is identify what it is across the board that we're hearing here in these people. What can you do today to sound more like these professionals? Well, you're gonna notice that this upper tooth smile thing, it really is pretty consistent across the board. You're gonna notice that with this music theater pop kind of sound, this ass shape is really prevalent. 
and consistent. And the more we open that and give space, the warmer and richer that sound is. You're going to notice how important consistent breath flow is. If you want a voice lesson or performance coaching or want me to work with you or your group to help you sing easier, perform at a consistently higher level, book a time with me at mrperformingartstudio.com. I look forward to working with you online.